it's about time I had the perfect fishing boat. And I don't mean any old boat, and I don't mean a trawler. I don't mean a bait fishing boat. I mean the perfect lure fishing boat. John B has a beautiful lure fishing boat. <sighs> that would be perfect. Look at it. Oh, she is. What's cracking, Wieners? Scott Martin has a beautiful boat. Wow. You've got to do a ram mount. You've got to do another type of you know, dual mount system. What do we do? Do I spend a fortune on a big bass boat? I'd love one. I love one. There are several problems though. One, they cost the bloody earth. Two, got a lovely camper van out there. It's got a tow bar on it. Front wheel drive. It will not pull a big boat up a slipway. I need to buy a new vehicle. I live in the UK. And for anyone who's watching this that doesn't live in England, we have a massive problem. We have not many big waters that we can access, and a lot of our waters are private, and all, oh, they don't have slipways. So where am I going to use it? I'd have to go to Holland, Sweden, Ireland. Believe it or not, that takes forever to get there. I would use this boat three or four times a year. But I'd love one. It's been a lifelong dream to fish out of a big bass style boat. Maybe not one quite like John B. What's cracking wieners? Scott Martin's got a beautiful bass boat. I'd love a bass boat. Never gonna use it. So I've gotta rethink this. What is the perfect boat for Andy? But I think I have found it. The perfect boat for me. Been igniting the world's passion for fun on the water since the early 1950s. And that's all I'm gonna show you. So watch the rest of this and see what is the perfect fishing boat, particularly here in the UK. Oh, beautiful! Andy, you know what you're looking for, really. You're going to have to come to Paul and check out what we've got for you. Right, guys, here I am at Shore Thing, and this is my first ever trip out in a kayak. Gonna go out in the bad boy, there it is. So anything can happen. I'm with Chris, he assures me we're not gonna fall in. Got my buoyancy aid on, feel like I'm pregnant, but apart from that, we're all good to go. So, one, can I actually get this thing going in a straight line? And two, we're gonna have a fish as well. So can I catch something with fins on? So we're going for the double, not falling in, catching a fish. Well guys, this is it. I'm out in the sea. And it feels a bit weird, if I'm being honest with you, because there's eddies and all sorts of things out here, and then it went straight into the pontoon. Oh dear. I think this is quite a steep learning curve. But we'll be all right, as long as we don't capsize. I suppose if I can do it out here, I can do it anywhere. I don't know where uh, Chris has gone. Oh, sorry. Sorry buddy, I didn't see you there. I was miles away, I was trying to stay afloat. <laughs> I've just gone straight past an angler. Oh dear. Right, there's Chris. What's the plan then buddy? I guess we start fishing, shall we? Start fishing, that sounds like a great idea. I absolutely love going out in the sea on that kayak. And I just saw instantly the benefits that you could have from a kayak compared to a boat. I could kit a boat out, I'd never use it. What's the point? Waste of money, cost me a fortune. For the fraction of the cost, I can get a top of the range kayak and I can kit it out with all the electronics that I'd have on a boat. And I could use it in numerous places around the UK. The way forward is to get a kayak. The problem is, which one, which make. I have no idea about kayaks. So in episode two, I'm gonna be interviewing two of the best kayak anglers in the country and picking their brains. So if you're like me and a complete noob to this sport, make sure you watch the second part so you can get the best advice.